Hello everyone, we are from ChildNet um, and our mission and our goal at ChildNet is to make the internet a great and a safe place for children and young people. Uh, my name is Ellie and I'm the Education Manager at ChildNet. I'm joined by my colleague Tom. Hi there, oh, yeah, I'm a Senior Education Officer at ChildNet International too. And we're also very lucky to be joined today by Ishal and Ishal is a member of our Youth Advisory Board for one of the projects we run called Project D-Shame. So Ishal has very generously given up her, her time out of her busy schedule um, to talk to us today about a brilliant piece of research that she's done, all about families' experiences during the lockdown and during the COVID-19 situation. So we're gonna have a little chat today about the research that Ishal did and find a bit more about it. Okay, and the first question's from me. So yeah, just. Introduce yourself a bit. Tell us a bit about yourself, please, Isha. Uh, my name is Isha. I'm in year 10. I'm 15. I live with my mom in London. I love to play the guitar and piano. And yeah, I'm just trying to cope with lockdown like everyone else. Brilliant. Um, and Isha, why did you want to do the research that you did around this time and around the lockdown? My mom is chair of the UCL Parents and Carers Network and she originally proposed the idea to me. To be honest, I wasn't completely on board in the beginning. I was kind of like, it's a holiday, basically. Why do I have to do more work? But then I thought about it and I thought, you know, if I can help other young people out there who are struggling right now, then I should take that opportunity, you know, and explain to parents what they can do to help their young people. Fantastic. And with that research, what were your key findings and what sort of experiences are young people having during lockdown? So I had maybe three key findings. The first one was that young people really needed routine. Almost every person we spoke to said they wanted to sit down with their parent or carer and have clear communication about what they expect from each other. And they wanted to work together because often it can be just the parent setting a routine for the child and they expect the child to go along with it. But young people said they wanted to do it with their parent. Uh, the second key finding was that young people were finding it really hard to adjust to homeschooling or home learning. It's really hard to work in an environment where you have so many distractions around you. So what they said is they would really, really want their parents to keep popping in to check on them every now and then, just to make sure they're staying on track. And parents actually didn't know this. They thought that their kids preferred to be left alone to do what they want, they thought they'd be interfering or interrupting them. But young people really wanted that kind of reassurance from their parents that are you staying on track? And the third thing about exercise, young people actually prefer to do exercise in their homes from YouTube. Those workouts at nine every morning with Joe or Chloe Ting workouts on YouTube. And parents often want to drag their kids outside into the fresh air. Say, you know, come on a run with me. Let's take the bikes out. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Ishal, one of the stats you found was that 80% of parents and carers felt that their children were on screens too much. And I think everyone's been using their screen a lot more these days. Um, but as a young person, what would you like to say to parents about that screen time use? I think it's inevitable that everyone's going to be using their screens a lot more, maybe young people more than other people in the household because a lot of schoolwork has now shifted online. So the majority of the day will most likely be spent on the internet. But rather than like rebelling against it, the parents should try and introduce it into the household. For example, movie nights, um, they could do work, YouTube workouts together as a family. They should kind of embrace it rather than try and push it away because it's a given that everything is going to increase during these times. And there's not much else for young people to do. It can also really be helpful for their social interaction. I'm sure the kids will be missing their friends a lot. So phone calls, FaceTimes, anything like that, group quizzes, all of this stuff can actually help your kids stay connected to their friends during these tough times. Brilliant. Um, I know you've touched upon this already a little bit, but yeah, the routine element really interests us. And, um, you know, and in a way, sometimes you can be a bit surprised that, that young people are saying they want a kind of routine were you surprised and and was there anything particular that i know you said that you'd like they'd like to be involved in the routine but why do you think they felt it was so important well in the first few days of quarantine i myself i just 
I didn't do much. I just watched a lot of Netflix and I didn't go outside. I was just eating and watching Netflix and doing a bit of study every now and then. And the days kind of all just blended into one. And it just felt like quarantine had gone on forever when it was only a few days. It's also really hard to get work done if you don't have a sense of structure. So for example, I'm going to finish this work in an hour, then move on to this. Also, it feels a lot like a school day in a sense, and it brings back some sense of norm normality in these kind of crazy times for young people to know that there's something that's always going to be constant. Yeah, yeah I feel like routine is, is the key for lots of people. Um, and mental health was chosen as the most important thing to focus on by the children who did the survey. Um, but there were differences in what parents and children thought was the right way to approach this. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about what those differences were? Young people, they wanted to kind of deal with their mental health themselves. As in, they wanted to maybe chat to friends. If talking to friends helps them on their phone, they wanted to go on social media to help them or watch some Netflix or things that cheer them up. Maybe listening to music, any of that type of stuff. They prefer to kind of work through it. They knew that it would pass eventually unless it's like a mental health condition. Whereas parents, they kind of were more full on and they were like, tell me what's wrong. You know, we're going to fix this when often you just don't know what's wrong. And they prefer, they thought the Internet was kind of the root of the problem. So they were kind of like, get away from your phone and your laptop when often it could be the phone or the laptop that's kind of bringing the child happiness. The parents will kind of like spend time with the family, go outside more. And I understand that, that like, for example, going outside into fresh air can release some hormones and chemicals. But sometimes it's important for kids to kind of work through it themselves as well, which is what they preferred. It's really interesting, isn't it? Yeah, the differences in ideas. And I think I kind of have an attitude that, you know, going outside is a really important thing to do, but it's not necessarily the same for everyone. 65% um, of the children thought their parents could do more to help them. We know this is also a tough time for parents, if, especially if they're, they're working and trying to keep that balance and looking after a child and helping a child with their homeschooling. If you had one piece of advice for families at this time what would it be it would definitely be just to cooperate with each other because everyone in your household is going through their own struggles at this time and you have to do what you can to make it easier for each other for example you know if you see that your parents are in a meeting don't go up to them to ask them what's for dinner tonight you know go and make your own snack you know just do what you can to help each other if the parents see you know that their kid is stressing out about schoolwork sit them down, tell them to watch a movie with you or go out for a walk together, you know, anything that can kind of calm their stress levels down. You basically have to work together and it sounds a bit cliche, but right now it's probably more important than ever. Yeah, I definitely agree, Yishal. Um, And finally, this was kind of the first piece of research of this scale that you've done, but do you have any plans to do any more research projects in the future? Uh, not necessarily research, but I'm working with some professors from the University of Oxford and they're planning a project that they would love for me to get involved in. And a webinar is coming up soon, hopefully, if, all, if everything goes as planned. Brilliant. So we've got lots more opportunities to find out more from you. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I, we're really looking forward to what you do next. Um, thank you for your time for this interview. And also thank, thank you, you. For, for doing the research itself. I think. There's loads of good advice in there for parents and children too to learn from. And we will leave it there. Thank you so much, Ishal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.